Well, uh, good morning uh, from my workshop. Uh, this is Gary, uh, ham radio call sign Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee. And I recently watched a uh, video from uh, Jim Heath, uh, W6LG, talking about handy talkies and spurious output. Uh, and he uh, called out the uh, TID Radio H3, which is an inexpensive uh, radio uh, available on Amazon for probably around $35. Um, I was provided an H3 by TID Radio for review because I'm interested in recommending a first radio to students of my, my amateur radio classes. So I was a little concerned because Jim was getting some results with a lot of um, extraneous spurious output that I had not measured. And I thought, what is going on? So this is the, the way that I have been measuring. So this is, and I don't know what Jim was using. It was either a tiny spectrum analyzer or a tiny spectrum analyzer ultra like this one right here. Um, here's the, the TID Radio H3. Um, and in my way of testing, uh, I run the output of the radio to a 30 dB attenuator uh, before it hits uh, the the uh, spectrum analyzer. Uh, this uh, will absorb the power and also uh, protect the input to the spectrum analyzer. And there is software. This is the same software that Jim was using. And so uh, we've starting here on 100 megahertz, uh, ending at uh, 500 megahertz. And if I take the radio and put it into transmit, well, you can see there's the the fundamental. 146.52 is where I have the radio programmed. Uh, the frequency uh, calibration on the tiny essays are not real great. But you'll notice the, the second harmonic there is way down. Uh, it's in excess of 40 dB, which is the requirement. And actually, we're not doing any averaging. Um, if I go to the software and I turn on time averaging to, to maybe uh, for over four periods, You can see the noise level cleans up down below, but the the uh, second harmonic output and the third harmonic output are are well below 40 dB down. So this bothered me because <laughs> why was Jim getting um, the, these um, these readings? So let me change my configuration to what I think he is doing uh, and see if it makes a difference. And I'll clue you in. It does. All right, so this is how I think Jim has uh, set up his uh, test apparatus. Here's the tiny uh, SA Ultra that I'm using. Notice that it's a telescoping WIP antenna that I've connected to the input uh, of the uh, SA. Here is the TID Radio H3. I'm going to move it back over this way because uh, out of uh, camera range, because of noise here in the shop and also because it blanked out my monitor. Let's hit transmit. And see, there, there's some, some spurious. Now, I still have averaging on. Let me turn averaging off. So we get an instantaneous display now. Again, I'm going to move it back, hit transmit. See the spurious, but it, it's, it's really, it's not as bad as it was, but you can see that the, the um, second harmonic seems to have come up in level. Okay, this is using this antenna. Let's make a switch. I have so many radios, Bao Fangs, um, the TID radio, uh, others. I have no idea. This is probably a Bao Fang antenna, the shortest of short rubber ducky antennas. All right, we put our telescoping whip back up uh, there. Let's move the radio um, to the back here. Take a look here at our spectrum analyzer. Doing oh my gosh, look! So here's the situation. I don't think it's a, a radio problem per se. I think it's a loading problem, or it has to do with the interaction of the antenna to the radio. And in this case, if you've got one of these short rubber duck antennas, yes, you can put out lots of crap. So. I think the TID radio is okay, 
except you're going to have to be sensitive to the kind of antenna that you use and the test setup that you use. If you're going to use um, an attenuator like I did direct, I think that's going to give you the most accurate reading uh, of what the radio is doing. <laughs> but um, uh, if you want to generate spurious emissions and whatnot, this is this is a way to do it. It could be overloading in the front end of the tiny SA. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, if you're going to use a really short antenna on these guys, um, there is a possibility that you're going to be generating spurious emissions, or it could be that we're overloading the, the tiny SA. Um, so um, this is just my review because I wanted to make sure if I'm recommending this radio uh, to my students that it's it's clean and okay I've got a sample of one but it has been clean in my experience uh, and um, uh, on UHF uh, all of the radios are clean uh, but on VHF uh, th that's where the problems come in with the Baofangs I saw the same thing that uh, Jim saw uh, with the Baofang 5 RM uh, and uh, some of the others. So um, I don't know if I clarified anything, but I, I just wanted to respond because I saw Jim's video and I thought, yikes, have I made a mistake? Mm, more to the fire. <laughs> Thanks for watching 73.